All right. Call the meeting to order, please, at the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Welcome, everybody. Roll call, Mr. Lumberg. All. Yes. For you. Yep. Saxer is absent. Delcott? Yes. Scott? Yes. Thank you. As a housekeeping item uh, tonight, with me being on uh, conference call, if the persons that make a motion and second a motion could uh, state their name as they're making that motion or second it, that would help me out a lot. Thank you. Um, with that, I would entertain a motion to approve the agendas presented, please. So moved, Telcut. Second, Scott. All of those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. No conflict of interest disclosure or waiver requests are for our review tonight. No community input is listed. So that takes us to our general business items. Uh, first thing on there is the superintendent's report. Superintendent Larson. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I have an update for you uh, this evening on a couple of different items. Just want to note uh, our new elementary school uh, that is currently under construction uh, that progresses. Uh, we have some um, general delays in a few areas, so our schedule has been altered by our uh, general contractor to make certain that our um, end of the year deadline or our, our uh, fall deadline is met so we can open that school up in the fall of, uh, 21. Um, would note that the naming facilities recommendation has come through and is on this agenda for action here in uh, the near future and then ult ultimately our elementary boundary line process has been completed and those communications will go out to families impacted um, here in uh, the coming month. Uh, our staffing timeline is outlined there for your review again. I would tell you that uh, all of the individuals that are currently in our system are certainly aware of the availability for uh, requesting an internal transfer, so that communication um, has, been, uh, has been made as well. Our legislative breakfast will be held here in the Brandon Valley High School community room Wednesday, December 9th at 7.30 a.m. I have offered um, a Zoom option for our District 10 or 25 legislators. If they would prefer that, I would also extend that same option to Board of Education members if they would prefer that platform as well. Otherwise, we will be in person here at the, uh, at the community room. Elementary staff laptop uh, update. Would note um, uh, distribution is estimated to occur here uh, in the month of December. Uh, currently in the process of um, developing next year's academic calendar, we'll work through our various councils um, for uh, consensus on that calendar. Would note that you'll receive a report and update uh, through your first meeting in January, and then there's potential adoption at the second meeting in January as well. Uh, would note Thanksgiving break begins this Wednesday, runs through uh, Friday, and then our winter break will begin December 23rd with a two-hour early dismissal with uh, class resuming January 4th, 2021. With that, would certainly entertain any questions that you have. Thank you very much, Superintendent Larson, for that. Uh, there is no board policy tonight, so that takes us to our first item under general business, the COVID-19 pandemic response plan. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Just want to provide an update with our uh, pandemic response plan and a couple of key items to, uh, to note. Uh, our facility and travel restrictions uh, for quarter three will be uh, communicated here, <clears throat> excuse me, will be communicated here in mid-December. At this time, we would anticipate all of those facility and travel restrictions to remain in effect, but we are evaluating some of our um, current facility 
um, restrictions, et cetera. And if we have to make a tweak or a change to those respective uh, restrictions, we will do that. But we anticipate that quarter three restriction announcement um, to come in mid-December. Uh, community and city ordinances. I just think it's relevant to note the city of Sioux Falls has passed a mask mandate that does not include schools within the ordinance. And then in addition to that, the ordinance does not include enforcement measures for violators. Um, I do know that the city of Brandon is engaged in at a high level in discussion about an ordinance. I know there has been no action taken um, regarding that. It is just simply high level discussion. I just wanted to note those, um, those respective items. Would tell you that the Brandon Valley School District, as you know, strongly recommends the use of a cloth face covering or face mask. And you have incentivized the use of uh, the face mask by allowing individuals that are identified <laughs> as close contacts to remain in school if they had that mask on or were protected by a barrier at the time of exposure. And then they remain in, uh, in school on close contact criteria. Certainly relevant to note that our um, masking has increased since that has gone into effect. Um, generally speaking, uh, if you, if you uh, look at the number of students that are in school on a daily basis uh, because of that policy change, you're talking about somewhere between 200 and 400 kids district-wide that are close contact um, kiddos that are able to stay in school because they were protected by a mask or barrier. Um, that number fluctuates uh, on a daily basis, but I would estimate at 200 to 400 that we have in school uh, able to learn in the classroom because of that uh, policy change. So that's an extremely positive, um, extremely positive thing. Uh, mitigation strategies, all classroom and building level mitigation strategies remain in effect. Um, and then all, all mitigation strategies that are in effect um, will remain in effect for semester two. They're located in the appendix of the pandemic response plan. Examples of that would be like your cohort isolation at your elementary level, your recess uh, strategy at the elementary, one-way one hallways in the high school, um, our additional spaces for, for lunch, uh, uh, lunches, those types of things. Um, are examples of the mitigation strategies that will continue. Uh, our distance learning program, it's important to note that all current families that are enrolled in uh, the distance learning model will receive a communication from their respective um, administrator today, and that will outline the process for them to communicate with us if they want to return to on-site traditional programming. Um, if individuals are going to stay in distance learning, they have to do nothing, they just continue. Uh, if individuals plan to return, they have to notify administration by December 11th, and then they will begin uh, their on-site traditional learnings beginning of quarter three or semester two, which is Monday, January 11th. So with that, would we'll certainly entertain any uh, questions you have regarding the COVID-19 pandemic response plan. I personally received a few questions regarding our masking strategy and whether or not um, the um, Sioux Falls mandate impacted uh, our school district. What I would say is a Sioux Falls city ordinance would impact Fred Assam Elementary specifically because it is within Sioux Falls city limits. However, that ordinance does not include schools, so it does not require us to pivot or change off of our current strongly recommended masking strategy. Uh, given the fact that we have municipalities uh, within the Brandon Valley School District that are having conversation but have not yet decided, um, I guess my recommendation would be to hold fast to our current strategy, our current protocol, um, and evaluate in the future if and when necessary. It's also relevant to note the South Dakota High School Activities Association is meeting tomorrow. Um, there is no specific plan that they have identified that they are doing or approving or adopting tomorrow. Uh, but in the event that something changed or tweaked at that level, there may be a necessity for us to change or tweak at our level. So at this point in time, uh, just hold fast, hold steady, and continue with our current plan. If uh, we need to re revisit, uh, and or revise that strategy, we can do so um, when necessary. With that, would certainly entertain any questions you have on that item. Jared, I've got one question. 
Um, second semester starts January 4th, right? January 11th. Oh, January. Oh, January. Okay. Okay. So okay. They'll, yeah. But, but they are, Greg, they're doing, correct me if I'm wrong, doing semester tests before. Um, yes. Which actually makes it a little easier in terms of A, staffing, B, kids being near each, I mean, there's just some things about doing it beforehand that probably makes life a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, so that would was one change to the schedule or whatever, but the semesters remain starting after the break, a week or so after the break or whatever. Correct. Right? Um, I, I do just, uh, any, uh, we're hanging in there, I guess, for people, you know, maybe our administrators can speak to that or Jared, you can speak to them, but just from the staffing standpoint, you know, again, I think one of the concerns would be that if we're going to run into a problem, um, it may not be so much that we have too many students out, it's that we don't have enough staff here to teach uh, the students uh, that are here and, so, and uh, you know, doing what we can to protect the staff and uh, they're doing what they can. But uh, if they're getting quarantined, most of that is probably not because of something that's happened at school would be my guess. Correct. So um, obviously our designation as, of staff as critical infrastructure workers has uh, made a tremendous um, improvement on staff availability as an individual that's a close contact uh, that is asymptomatic can be placed in that uh, criteria and allowed to continue to work. Uh, so that's been incredibly helpful um, regarding staffing. I would tell you that you would not be able to staff your your school buildings if we didn't have our critical infrastructure worker designation in place. Um, with that being said, uh, staffing is a challenge as we navigate the COVID-19 pandemic. I had a conversation with a media outlet here this morning and I would tell you the same thing that I told them. We always have substitute shortages, always have substitute shortages. Uh, there, is, um, there is never a year where we haven't dealt with substitute shortages. However, COVID-19 uh, certainly um, exasperates that, uh, that, that issue. With that being said, we have been able to staff our facilities. Um, we utilize our um, education assistance to cover areas when necessary. We utilize teachers uh, during their planning period. They're compensated for the loss of that planning period, but we utilize teachers during the planning periods, um, et cetera. Uh, so at this point in time, we've been able to manage all of our staffing shortages. I would tell you that um, we have multiple strategies available to us that we have not yet invoked uh, to cover staff. Uh, or staffing shortages. Um, so I would say uh, we are um, a long ways off from having to consider closing buildings because of staffing shortages. Um, and in the event that we got to that point, we would certainly start at the highest level and work down, but we have, we have not been um, to that point. No one has called and asked the uh, superintendent or business manager to sub yet. Uh, the day that that happens, we know that it's getting tight. So um, anyway, moral of the story is staffing is a challenge, but we've been able to navigate to this point. And so the public knows we're going to approve a number of substitutes and some of those are some of our own kids coming back over break. Um, well, I'm sure their parents are thrilled that they're going to work while they're back at break, but many of those are kids that are pursuing degrees in education, so this is an opportunity for them to get in a classroom. It's an opportunity for us to get some more staffing available to us at least maybe through the middle of January or later, and this is a pivotal time for us, so it's great to have those people step up and, and apply and for us to be able to approve them, and, and uh, uh, that will certainly help as well get us through the next... Uh, couple months, Absolutely. month and a half. I would note any individual that is in college uh, and has applied to be a substitute that is under the age of 21 will work solely in our elementary buildings. Uh, that's an administrative regulation yep. we just decided on to isolate them from kiddos that maybe they are just a few years removed from. Uh, so just, I guess that's just an item to note since you uh, referenced the college kids. I sure. think it's important for parents and guardians to know and understand that as well. Anything else? All right, thank you very much, Superintendent Larson.
Next, we have to, uh, approve the facility naming committee recommendation of Inspiration Elementary School for the new elementary school located at 3401 South Sparta Avenue in Sioux Falls. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. The facility naming committee, uh, which member Odie was uh, was on as the Buildings and Grounds Committee Chair, uh, met. We met with administration, BVA teacher representa uh, representative, uh, community member, parents, students. Um, we met here in the high school community room uh, on November 12th. Uh, it was a lunch meeting. I facilitated that meeting. I was a non-voting participant. Um, Below I've outlined for you the process that we utilized and I would just uh, note that uh, at this point in time, the uh, facility naming recommendation is Inspiration Elementary School. I would just like to make a comment if I could. Um, I thought the names that were brought out were just outstanding. I mean, there was 12 of them that, um, there's a few of them that I didn't know what they were, but they had some good um, good meaning behind them. Um, but really quick, I think the name that we came up with sort of is uh, the target that we're looking for because it's like in our business model, we're trying to generate kids to experience success and inspiration and inspire kids. So I think Inspiration Elementary really is gonna be a good name for that school and it sort of fits our business motto. Thank you for doing that. I actually think it's a name that we need right now in the middle of a bunch of um, negativity, uh, honestly. And so I thank you for doing that and it's gonna be a great name, so. With that, if there are no other questions, I would entertain a motion to approve the facility naming committee recommendation of Inspiration Elementary School for the new elementary school located at 341 South Sparta Avenue in Sioux Falls. Odie motions, or Odie makes a motion to approve Inspiration Elementary. Second, Scott. There's been a first and a second. All of those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes, thank you. Number three, uh, under consent, I would entertain a motion to acknowledge the Brandon Valley Educational Association notification of contract negotiations for 2020 and beyond. So moved. Or 2021, sorry. So thank moved, Talcott. Second, Odie. There's been a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes, thank you. Personnel items number one through seven, I would entertain a motion to approve those as presented, please. So moved, Telcott. Second, Scott. There's been a first and a second, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes, thank you. Under communication, there is a thank you there for your review. And with that, that takes us to formal board reports. Does anyone have a formal report that they would like to share tonight? I guess not. That, Madam, Madam Chair, yeah. if I may, I'm sorry, I'm going to steal the, the transportation component. I do want to send a special thank you to uh, Director Moody and the Transportation Department for navigating our first wintry blast uh, here earlier in November. They did a fantastic job of uh, navigating that quick moving storm and uh, getting all of our kids home safely and uh, navigating that situation. So certainly appreciate their uh, great work during that uh, first little blast of winter. Thank you. With that, that takes us to the end of our agenda. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion, Scott. Second, Odie. It's been a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Everyone have a happy Thanksgiving. No matter if it might look a little bit different this year, be safe because, you know, as our CEO always tells us, we need you. So thank you.